And sometimes funny things happen to people uh, in the Darley Routier case. Mulder's gone now. Cron is gone. Uh, a whole lot of them are gone. Max Courtney's gone. Uh, Judge Toll, who died of dementia in September of 2007. Let me read this. The daughter and two young grandchildren of a deceased Texas judge have been found dead in their home. The apparent murders follow other crimes reported there during the past week that could have been committed in retaliation for the judge's role in a high-profile case. Found shot to death this morning in North Dallas' home were a 52-year-old woman and her two children, four-year-old boy and eight-year-old girl. The home is owned by Frank Geis, who is the son-in-law of District Judge Mark Stenson Toll, who died last year. The murder victims are his daughter, Jim Marie Toll Geis, Two grandchildren, according to the Dallas News and WFFA TV. Neighbors say they think the attacks were reported the attacks reported at the home were in retaliation against Miss Geis because her father was a judge in a whole pro high profile case. Reports the Dallas newspaper, which doesn't specify the case, though. to be linked to the earlier reported crimes. <clears throat> the recent crimes included a home invasion, an assault, a kidnapping, in which both Frank and Frank Geis and Jennifer Toll were reportedly victimized, and authorities are trying to determine whether these earlier attacks could be linked to the murders. Things that make you go, hmm. Interesting, huh? So they think that these could be retaliate. These attacks could be retaliation because he served in a high-profile case. So now that you watch this, all right, I want, I'd like for Tracy to tell me where my epic fail is. See, I knew, I knew, I know how you'll react. I knew not to say, wow, maybe it happened because of Darley's case. No, the police said they feel like it was in retaliation for a high profile case. That's what they said. We always want to talk about what the police said. How am I putting out a narrative when the police said they thought that it was because of he served on a a high profile crime where's my narrative my narrative is hmm you said this judge had alzheimer's and he didn't and you didn't respond to that you also said that that letter showed that she had uh uh been offered a deal and i showed you twice where the da said that she was never offered a deal so is that an epic fail on your part no it's just that you made a mistake and you want to keep using that as if Darley was just so confident in her innocence that she turned that deal down. She never got a deal. And I, we proved it. You said she got a deal. So, where's my narrative at? Obviously, she suffered from mental illness. Obviously. All right? Her case has nothing to do with Darley. Right. And what do you mean, shame on me? <laughs> Shame on me for putting out a story about a judge who had a home invasion and his kids were killed. Well, shame on you for put, putting it up there about Darley who had an intruder coming in her home and, and her kids were killed, right? Is that an epic fail on your part? I'm reporting a story. And I never once said that Darley had anything to do with it. Just it happened to be the judge that put her away for death. Well, actually, it wasn't the judge that put her away for death. The 12 jurors put her away from death. Can you show me where any one of those had Alzheimer's or anything? You know, even 10 years later. <laughs> Putting out a narrative. <laughs> All I did was put out a story of what happened to the judge in his life. Never once mentioned Darley's name in that. 
never once made, uh, mentioned Darley's name in that article that I put up about Judge Toll, Toll's daughter and grandchildren. Never once. So how's that an epic fail? The epic fail is when you stated that he had Alzheimer's on the bench and he didn't. That's the epic fail on you, not me. Where's the narrative? All I, all I did was put it out. What happened to the judge? There's nothing in that video that mentioned Darling. It's just things that make you go, hmm. Imagine that. That judge put an innocent Darling, according to you, in jail. And a home and home evasion happened in her house, and somebody came in there and killed her two kids. So he put her in jail for that. Isn't it ironic that the same type of thing happened to his family? I didn't mention, Darl. How's that an epic fail? You tell me how that's an epic fail by me putting up an article. I'll tell you what's an epic fail. When you said that the only reason I went up there and got my son out of, the, out of my other son's house was that CPS threatened me that if I didn't do that. Yeah. So, so tell me how that's an epic fail. Because you got that wrong. We'll move on down here. And this, folks, is how Darley Rutier's trial transcripts were handled in a personal storage shed of the court reporter who lied, claiming there were no audio tapes at all. Actually, she said there weren't any audio tapes of the the last 20-some pages stored with her Christmas, Christmas decorations. If you go back and listen to what Danelle said about this, they were wondering why the daughter, who was actually the one, her Halsey's daughter, who was actually the one that handled the recordings, didn't say anything about them tapes being available. She didn't say anything about it. And Danelle goes, that's her mom. She's not going to tell on her. Thirty-three thousand mistakes, absolutely, and I agree. There were thirty-three thousand mistakes, but they recovered the audio tapes that she's talking about here. They recovered them, and word for word was transcribed into the Simmons transcripts, which the Supreme, which the courts approved. There's no one to this day who sat on that stand and testified or testified at all or made any comment in that trial. This says, hey, that's not what I said. Where's that? It was the sentencing phase that was missing. So. So they went and get, got the tapes, right? Where are you supposed to store it? Where does it say Christmas decorations? <laughs> Where are you supposed to store things? You know, the, the copies of, of Media Tried Justice Denied was also stored in a warehouse. The book that they so much promote for Darley Routier, and it's full of uh, misspellings, Photoshop stuff, but they say that Chris Brown's book proves that she's innocent, right? But 20-some thousand copies were stored in a warehouse storage center and somehow it all caught on fire you know that it, it caught on fire then when darling key got wind of that the copies that she had that made it through the fire she was selling them on ebay she was selling them on ebay with an autograph and pictures of her dead grandchildren were in that book So you know, you know, here's here's your epic fail, Tracy. God love you to death. Your epic fail is that after 27 years, two appeals, several lawyers, the DA overlooking the case again, looking over the case again in 2008, Darley is still in there. That's your epic fail. She's still in there. God love you. I hope your brother's doing well. Hopefully, you and I get through this stuff. 
Hopefully you and I get through this stuff. I just wonder how you're going to feel when the Innocence Project backs out of it and they execute her. I don't want Darling to die. But I don't want the memory of Devin and Damon to die in in the fin- in the fact that you all are just trying to prove that she's innocent when she's not. Are you smarter than the state of Texas? Are you smarter than the Supreme Court? Are you smarter than the appellate court? Why are you so angry about this? Why has your channel not been anything about Darley until I started to speak out on her again? As long as me and you are to, can talk uh, uh, about Darley, I'm I, I'm cool. Is that how it is? Darley Routier is 100% guilty. And I will prove you wrong every time, Tracy. And you can call it epic fail all you want. You can say it's an epic fail. That's not an epic fail. And what do you mean shame on me? You told me that the video that I put up so people would remember who Braden was with his little voice and his little picture, you told me that was disgusting, right? But it's okay to put up pictures of Devin and Damon, right? It's okay for Free Darley to put up pictures of Devin and Damon and videos of Devin and Damon because they want people to remember them. Is it disgusting when they do that? Just a question. Have a nice day. Oh, and Tracy, the reason that I blocked you is because you're not going to come under my channel and leave shitty remarks. We can debate this case, but there has there's no reason for insult. There's no reason for you to look at epic fail. There's no reason for you to do that. You can do that over here. And if I want to respond to it, I can. But you're not doing that to my page. And I'm not going to come to your page with my bullshit, as you saw, call it. I am trying to adult our way out of a huge argument about a case. I am allowed to have these opinions. You're allowed to have your opinions. You're allowed to put what you want up on your page. And, and, and by God, don't you tell me about calling places. Don't be a hypocrite. You know, we're kind of starting to wonder about some things that's been happening in our groups with trolls.